Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Olivet Trite Building United Church of Christ, an open and affirming community of faith for no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And a special welcome on this beautiful first day of May. We have a few announcements. First, today is the final day for any health kit items for Chester County Migrant Ministries. Throughout the rest of the month, our mission focus is going to be monetary donations to buy children's Bibles. Every year, our congregation purchases picture Bibles for our graduating little angels. All of the preschoolers who are four-year-olds but are now about to spread their wings and fly off to kindergarten receive a Bible from the church. So if you would like to donate money towards that cause, please speak with or give a phone call to Holly Knauer. She's going to raise her hands for you. Her contact info is also in the church directory. And if you cannot get in touch with her, just call the church office. If you are one of the folks who really enjoys the upper room, our monthly, or rather every two months, uh, worship resource for at home, we do have a number of the May and June left available. So please feel free to take an upper room as you leave today. It is a communion Sunday. So I want to remind everyone that we are an open table where anybody who wishes to know the presence of Christ may commune with us. Uh, if you have not picked up your prepackaged communion, it is available upon entrance to the sanctuary. If you forgot or didn't get one, feel free to grab it when we have a hymn or at any point during the service. You access the wafer by removing the top layer of cellophane. And then you access the communion grape juice by pulling the tag. Again, we are excited to commune together this beautiful Sunday in May. Finally, we do continue to have adult Bible study over Zoom every Wednesday night. That is at 6 p.m. And we also have an open prayer time every Wednesday at 7 p.m. All and any are welcome to attend. Seeing as there are no other announcements to share, let's be in the spirit of worship this morning. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up. O Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. Say praises to the Lord, O you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. You have turned my mourning into dancing. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. At this time, let's rise in spirit or body as together we sing.
with power from above, making us instruments of your peace, love, and justice. Move us to bless you in worship and be blessings to others in the world. Amen. We are called and commissioned to be witnesses of Christ, to be changed, to grow in our faith. And yet change is often painful and hard, and his work that we leave undone. Join me as together we confess. Merciful God, Jesus taught that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed to all nations. Yet we are a people of divisions, grievances, and grudges. At times, we find it easier to wait on God than to actively heal the wounds of this world. We shrug off the burdens of being Christ's lamb and tending his sheep. Forgive us and give us the strength and resolve to walk in Jesus' footsteps. Amen. The good news of the risen Christ is that not height, depth, rulers, things present, nor things to come, to keep us from the love of God. In the name of Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Lord, 
The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Now the men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple of Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias? He answered, Here I am. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man. How much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hand on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, some of you might know, some of you might not, that my spare time, I am a family genealogist. What does that mean? Well, it means that I study my own and other people's family trees. Now, it's a hobby that I've had since I was only about 16 years old. And admittedly, over the years, it's become a bit more of an obsession than a hobby. As a genealogy enthusiast, I have come across some very unusual names. Some of them I absolutely adore, like my third great-grandmother, Anne Sinetta. Isn't that such a unique and beautiful name, Anne Sinetta? Now, some of the names in my family I think are absolutely horrid, like my dad's great-grandfather, Blashus. Who names a kid Blashus? <laughs> there are other names I've found that are just odd, such as Ebizina. And thinking about it, I myself have had different names. I was born Leslie Hoffman. Hoffman being a very Pennsylvania Dutch family name. But my married name is Mamas, which is Greek. But beyond just having different national origins, these two names, in some ways, metaphorically describe two different people. Leslie Hoffman was a student. Leslie Mamas is an ordained clergywoman, wife, and stepmother. And you know, it's that last title that perhaps has been the most profound for me. I was seriously considering not changing my last name when I got married. 
Why did I? It was because my soon-to-be stepchildren protested, saying they wanted me to have the same name as them. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> and I remember, even though they were still young, how elated they were when they saw my brand new driver's license with Mama on it. To them, that name change meant that I was theirs now. <laughs> it was a sense of ownership. And we actually see a similar thing happen again and again in the Bible in relation to God. God changes people's names to show that they are now God's, that they belong to God. They have embraced a new role. And although being the same person, they've become something new as well. They were God's, and they became God's, and in that moment, God marks them with a new name. And again, we have so many examples of this. Think about Abram and Sarah, who we find in Genesis 17. Now, God changed their names to Abraham and Sarah, and with the new names came new commitments, right? There was suddenly a whole covenant that they had to live up to. There was a vow they took for God. No longer were they to worship all the gods of their ancestors, but rather only God. Later on in Genesis, Genesis 32, there was Jacob. Now, if we're being honest, Jacob was a bit of a manipulative trickster. He tricked his brother into trading him his birthright for a bowl of stew, of all things. And he deceived his aging father, Isaac, into granting him his final blessing, a blessing that was supposed to go to his brother. And over the 20 years, that Jacob lived with his father-in-law, Laban. The two men constantly schemed and tried to outwit each other. Then, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. No longer was he laying his own schemes and doing things his own way for his own sake. Now he was called to do things God's way. And a change in name came along with that. We move ahead to the Gospels where we meet Simon. Simon was a fisherman and as such dealt with a lot of uncertainty in his life. Think about it as a fisherman your entire survival, whether you had food to eat or support your family, was based on your catch. His very existence depended on the water currents, the temperatures, and basically luck. But in John 1, 38 through 42, he left his nets behind and became a disciple of Jesus. Jesus changed his name to Peter, meaning rock. His life went from being one of insecurity to the rock solid certainty of faith in Christ. So, yes, in our scriptures, when God's people changed, their names changed. And that brings us to today's story in Acts, the story of Saul. Saul was an angry man who did not like Christians at all. And honestly, it was a political thing. These Christians not only believed 
differently than he did. He felt they actually posed a threat to all of his traditions, everything that was good in his community. He would hear about these people infiltrating traditional communities of faith and corrupting them with these newfangled ideas. Just the thought made Saul angry. How could these people be any good? Saul yells, he raves, he made nasty threats, even threats of murder. He beat them and sometimes even bound and arrested them in order to have them killed. All the while, he thought he was doing the right and righteous thing by raging against these troublemakers. These people who threaten the status quo of his faith and tradition. You know, I like to think that out of all of these people of faith, we can relate to at least one. Maybe there are some of us who are a bit like Saul, and that we're raging against those in society that we disagree with or dislike. Maybe some of us are like Abram. We're believers. We have faith in God, but we lack deep abiding faith. Even if we proclaim God, and worship God, hearing about a miracle just doesn't truly convince us. Maybe some of us are a bit like Jacob, <laughs> thinking that we know best, and sometimes walking the line of questionable ethics to get our way. Maybe some of us are like Simon, living in the midst of uncertainty and insecurity, not knowing which way the winds are going to blow us next. All of those faithful people of God had a moment of calling and change. And yes, change can be terrifying like it was for Saul. Think about what that confrontation on the road with God was like for him. Imagine you're walking along, minding your own business, and all of a sudden you have this close encounter. There's a bright light, flashing light. It's been so bright that you fall down trying to cover your eyes, and then you hear this booming voice calling your name, even though there is no one. When it's all over and you get up, your traveling companions, your associates, they didn't see anything. They're looking at you like maybe you're out of your mind, just had some kind of episode. And it's at that moment that you realize, wait a minute, why is everything dark? You can't see. And you try to buckle along, holding the hands of your traveling companions, thinking that it must have just been the bright light. It'll wear off. It has to wear off. But it doesn't. You go to bed terrified, in a panic, so upset in body that you can't even eat, thinking at least my sight might come back when I wake tomorrow. But when you wake up and open those eyes, there's nothing but terrifying darkness. For three days. I wouldn't want to go through that. That feeling of being completely out of control, not even knowing what God is about to do with my life. Sometimes you may even feel a little bit out of control, like you're bumbling around in the darkness, not sure what tomorrow, next month, or next year is going to be. 
going to look like. We're all just waiting for whatever God decides to do next, good or bad. But the thing about this story, about Saul's story, is that through all of it, even the terrifying change, God claims Saul as God's own. <laughs> Just like my stepkids claim me as their own. And yes, that involves change. Leslie Lamas is not the same person as Leslie Hoffman was. Leslie Hoffman had to learn an entire new skill set to be a stepmother. Things like patience, unconditional love, and getting stains out of laundry. <laughs> Seriously, I have no idea what children were capable of doing to clothing. But these are all growth. Changing, growing, it can be uncomfortable, it can be scary, but it leads us to be better, more whole, more faithful people. People that God is more able to use. People like Abraham, Israel, Peter the Rock, and yes, even Paul, the man who would go on to spread the gospel throughout the Mediterranean and write the majority of our New Testament. All of those epistles. You see, when God claims us, change happens. Scary and hard, and sometimes it means admitting that we were wrong about something. Or having to change course to say we're sorry. But it also comes with a new identity. You know, there's a reason that every time we baptize someone, whether it's a tiny infant or an adult, we ask, by what name is this person called? We are naming that person to God, knowing that God is now claiming them as God's own, pouring out the Holy Spirit. Think back to your own baptism, if you remember or the baptism of those you love. That was the moment when God claimed you. A lot less traumatic than that of Saul. I want us to all think about the ways in which God may be coming to us, if not with flashes of light or sudden debilitating blindness. What nudging? What suggestions is God pouring out to us? In what ways does God want to claim us, put God's stamp on us, and make us something new? It's a question worth pondering in your prayer this week. Amen. Those walls. We ask God's healing 
for a number of our friends and members. We lift to God Scott, asking that God be with him. We pray for Connie, Donna, and Susan. Kurt asks continued prayers for Ben and Anita. We continue to pray for Merle, who is on the transplant list, for Marianne as she undergoes cancer treatments, for Lane, Anna's cousin, as well as some of our showings, folks like Audrey, Jenny. We ask prayers of healing for <clears throat> Deb, and all who may, in fact, be sick, suffering, or dealing with pain this week. Are there any specific prayer requests to lift up this morning? Yes. We have a friend of ours, David, his son, a nine-month-old friend, that has been to a hospital and bringing food for his brain. So Dave's child has been at CHOP right. for swelling on the brain. And what is that, that child's name? Brandon. Brandon. So we pray for Dave and Dave's child, Brandon, this day. Yes. For the homeless. Prayers lifted for the homeless. Others. Yes. Of oh, Barry for peace. Prayers of peace and God's comfort for Barry. Any others? Seeing none, let's be in the spirit of prayer. Holy God, this day we ask that you pour out your healing in body. Be with everyone who is dealing with a physical ill, whether it be chronic pain or seasonal allergies, all who have upcoming procedures or tests. Oh Lord, we continue to pray for COVID recognizing that our situation is not that of everyone of our children. We lift up this day those in China where the pandemic is once again ravaging the population and causing so much death. Gracious God, we pray for healing in spirit and mind. Be with all who are anxious, who are struggling with depression, thoughts of suicide, fighting the urges of addiction or eating disorders, those who are losing memories or have a diagnosis of dementia. Remind us that you are capable of smoothing our rough edges and making us beautiful and whole the way you intended. Gracious God, this day we pray for our sisters and brothers around the world who are experiencing violence. We continue to pray for the violence in Ukraine. We pray that you soften the hearts of those in Russia who are making war. We ask that you protect civilians who are just trying to survive. And that you bless those who are welcoming of refugees. God, we pray for those in our own nation this day who have lost property or life to the terrible wildfires burning to our west. Remind us that we are to be stewards of your creation, caretakers. Help us to care not only for one another, but for this entire earth that you made and made good. We ask all these things in the name and power of Christ, who claims us, teaching us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now take the supper of the Lord for your comfort in faith and thanksgiving. Come not because you must, but because 
the men. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you sincerely desire to be God's true disciples. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because you are worthy of heaven's reward, but because you stand in need of God's mercy and pardon. Let us together confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worship your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You remember that Jesus traveled the road to Jerusalem. 